Hello class, welcome back to another one of my Denizen scripting tutorials. Today we're going to be covering t um, tags and what they are. So this is going to be a very, very basic demonstration tutorial because uh, tags are actually so overly complicated. Or, well, they can be anyway, they're not usually. But the point is they're the most versatile thing inside of the scripting engine and they are going to be very important to know and you know it's very important and crucial to understand which ones you are going to need to use. So before we get started if you haven't already hop on over to my discord channel link will be in the description below lots of good stuff going on in there posting my new videos all the time in there as well as tons of questions being asked and answered lots of stuff to learn lots of stuff uh, people to learn from. Uh, yeah, there's just so much going on in there. If you haven't already, please make sure to join. It's a pretty good time. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back into the tutorial. So there are four basic denizen tag types. Um, do know, this does not mean that there are only four. This means these are just the most essential four, which you will run into pretty much the entirety of your scripting career. So the four I'm going to go ahead and quickly list off here are going to be chat tags, player tags, location tags, and context tags. Of course, there are many, many more than that. There are also uh, world tags, server tags, uh, more specific locations such as like cuboid and, well, I guess literally location, though I did mention that one, uh, tags. So there's all sorts of kinds of tags, sorts of kinds. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much the big four, at least in my opinion. Anyone, uh, you're, you're free to disagree or, you know, add to that list if you choose. Up to you. But those are, in my opinion, the biggest four that you will need to know as they will play into, well, uh, pretty much the entirety of your scripting. So, to get started, let's, uh, let's talk about chat tags real quick. So chat tags are pretty much going to be what they help you with your chat if i should which i should have already i'm gonna go ahead and open up the old denizen um, scripting page on google so that way i can kind of give you guys an example of what i will be talking about so let me go ahead and pull this over real fast i'm gonna go on to denizen uh, sometimes it shows up sometimes it doesn't uh scripting there it is. Okay. So, um, I need to actually bookmark that official page I'll be looking at. But yes, tag search is where we are going to spend a majority of our time. So, let's, um, the quick way to know what you're gonna need is, um, so say you're starting off with an NPC. Uh, as usual, the first thing you're gonna want to do is generally set up some sort of dialogue. So. That means we know chat is going to be involved. How do you know what tags to use? Well, pretty much the best way to do it is to know what you want to do. Excuse me, know what you want to do. And then look up what it's going to be related to. If we're giving an NPC dialogue, we know it's going to be related to chat. Therefore, we need to look up chat tags. So we're going to go on to that website, one.denizenscript.com. Um, and what we're gonna do, don't don't use the search here. This will like incredibly narrow literally everything. What I like to do uh, is if you press Control or Command F, you will actually um, you'll bring up this search thing. And what we're gonna type in there is chat. Now it'll highlight anything chat related. Hence, chat with us on Discord. Yada yada. But now we can start getting more into complex stuff such as chat history which are going to be the last messages that a player sent. I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> I guess it saves up to the last 10 things. I'm going to assume that's the default, uh, just because that's what it says there. I haven't looked too much into it, but uh, yeah. So chat history, chat prefix, chat suffix, uh, last colors used in chat, uh, specific things such as hovering, um, you know, messages. Uh, groups, there's there's just a lot of stuff, you know, and hover, and click, and insertion, and hover, and click, keybind, you know, there's just so many things. If I just keep clicking this down arrow, you will see all these chat tags. Now, uh, what's cool about these is, um, there's actually a lot of different ways you can do things, but 
one big thing to note with Denizen is they use this format. So like, say with Essentials, we're used to typing like, and E, this is a hand for test. I should probably turn that off. And you can see it comes back with this yellow and red because we have the and E and the and for. But with Denizen, you'll have to put those inside of these uh, parameter brackets. So, you know, it would come out looking like um, like this as opposed to what we had. Now, of course, if we type it in chat, we're going to get something kind of funky. But this is where we're going to use the ex narrate command. So whenever you're testing commands, you always want to do ex. And then generally, if you're doing dialogue, you're going to want to do narrate. So if we were to um, copy and paste what we just had, just copy that and then go ex narrate and then paste it. Well, it's not going to work unless we add the double quotations. <clears throat> Let me turn out Denizen debug real quick so that way we can actually see it more clearly. There we go. This is a test. Now, what's really cool is chat tags are very, very interchangeable. You don't have to stick to doing uh, a format in front of each one like this, but you can if you choose to. So, what we're gonna go back and do actually is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna change how this is written. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is we're gonna type element. So. Um, so whenever you're talking about element, element is a string, which means you can input numbers, text, or, well, literally anything. Everything that you type in is considered an element. So what we're going to type is we're going to, we need to put these square brackets. We're going to type, this is a test, and then we need to put square brackets on the other side. Now what's really cool is you can type in color names color green okay there it is so anything that's inside these square brackets you will not need quotations for even if you have spacing like I do that's because technically in a way they're like counted as quotations because this is your input here so you know you could literally do like this is a test with capitalizations or you can just go ahead and space it all out and still get the same result and then you can uh, add color here. So if you do dot color, you can input color names such as green, red, um, yellow, oops, if I can even type correctly, yellow, blue, etc. There's there's a ton of different ones that you can do. It doesn't, um, you'll, you'll have to look up which ones you can do. I There's gonna be some obvious ones that aren't gonna be as available such as like dark red. That's not really a thing as you can see but your basic colors are, and if you need to look, you can also type in, you know, you can come back to the page and type uh, color. Yeah, and see like right there, it is showing me exactly what I did wrong. It was supposed to be color bracket color. Um, but you can see here what it has going on. Let me go ahead and close it out. You can do color gold, or you can type six, which is like, um, this is gonna be, using the essentials format. So if you're used to essential color codes, you know that like one through nine is different colors. So like, you know, blue, green, um, cyan, aquamarine, red, you know, purple, etc. Or if you want to get really fancy, you can actually use hex codes inside this too. So you can have very distinct color. So like this will be red. If I do like 2020. It'll be kind of, it's harder to see. It doesn't show up as well in Minecraft, but you can change. I'm actually just going to change this real quick. As you can see, that color is not one that you can usually get when using Essentials color codes. So, um, yeah, and neither is that one. So you can use hex codes too. Do know it will show up a little bit differently in chat than it will um, in like color hex or any online website like that. I'm not sure why, but that's just kind of how it is. So that's pretty much gonna be the basics of the chat, um, chat tags. There's so many different things that you can do with it and very complicated mechanics. I'll do another tutorial on chat tags and how to make them more advanced. So that way you guys can kind of, um, kind of dive into that more on your own, you know, 
whenever you choose to. I'm not gonna try and cram it all into this tutorial because that's, uh, there's so many things that you can do with it that it's better that I just leave it in its own tutorial. So next we need to talk about player tags. How, how are we gonna determine what to use with players? Well, that entirely depends on what you are trying to set up. So for example, um, you've seen in my past tutorials, we use a lot of um, parameter brackets and then player, like that. We use that all the time in scripts, but what does that mean? Well, player tags are literally anything that refers to a player. That tag alone is literally an entire tag right there. You can use it by itself, though it's, you're not going to get much use out of it, because it's more of a preface for um, it, uh, tag extensions. So say we did ex narrate player dot name. So that's going to return mushroom status because I am the player. Uh, whenever I'm the one typing the command, it's going to refer to me, and it'll do dot name, or well, it'll return my name. Of course, um, of course, there's different things you can do. You can do like display display name. Yeah, and that's going to give me my prefix too. So that's uh, that's how you're going to get that out of an entri uh, entire chat formatting. If you're using like uh, interaction between NPCs and you want to make it look like you're actually talking, you're going to want to use player display name as a tag. Now, another example of player tags is trying to see how much money I have. Of course, if you use Denizens, or sorry, not Denizen, if if you use Essentials, you can just type slash BAL, balance 15. Easy as that, right? But say you want to do something more customized, uh, customizable. You want your own custom, um, <clears throat> you want your own custom currency on your server. Well, what you can do is you can actually type ex narrate, and you can use the tag player dot money. As you can see, it's going to return the standard value. But what you can do is change it up from there. So now we can add things like. Um, and a dollar sign player dot money. It'll change it that way. Uh, you can add even more formatting if you wanted to be like and six. Now we have a green dollar sign with an orange number. Um, you know, red dollar sign with a dark blue number. There's there, you can change it up so much. Um, also, always make sure to close this off. I realized it was working, but it was also because it was all literally tags except for that, uh, the dollar sign. Usually it won't work unless you add this, but um, yeah, so as you can see, there's so much you can do with this. Um, so that's going to be an example of that. Now what if we want to get kind of crazy? Say we're going to use the flag command, so ex flag player, this is referring to me. This is only going to flag me because I am player. And we're going to type test. Okay. I have the debugger turned off. I should probably turn it back on for the rest of this tutorial now. I just wanted to turn it off so we could see more clearly. So now if we type ex narrate, we can check for flags. This is going to be another one. So we can do has flag and then square bracket test. It's going to return true because we just used this command to flag us with the test flag. Now, say we wanted to check a value of it. <clears throat> well, to use a flag with a value, you can you would put the flag name, colon, and then any sort of input value. You could put um, you could put like text, like blah. You can put a numerical value. Entirely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and put five. So now we're going to go back to this command. And instead of changing has flag, we're just gonna do flag test, and it's gonna return to us what the value of our flag is, which for us, we set to five. Again, this will work if you type text instead. So if I set it to blah, if I go back, it'll return the value of test, which is now blah. So this is gonna be how you would use flags for checking things. Um, pretty much any time you type in player, this is gonna be your preface for literally everything that you do if it involves a player. Um, I guess one thing I can do, oops, you got to see the backdrop of my classroom. 
Um, say I do <clears throat> ex narrate player dot cursor on. This is going to show where the crosshair is. So right now it's going to give the location, which is going to be the coordinates in the world. But say I want to change it up. Say I don't want to know. Say I don't want to know what the location is, but rather what the block is. So if I were to type dot material, now it's going to take the material that we, the player, are currently looking at. And it'll return spruce planks. It'll return brown terracotta, oak door with a bunch of other parameters that are pretty cool, but unnecessary, uh, at least for this tutorial. You know, green concrete, etc. So that's pretty much... Um, it all boils down to everything revolves around this player tag. So the next thing we need to understand is location tags. Why would we use location tags? Well, they are especially important for world events. Of course, you could do it for a lot of things, but say you wanted to... Um, uh, let's see, let me figure out my F5 here. <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and type... We're gonna look somewhere and we're gonna type uh, ex narrate player dot cursor on and that's going to return our location see how it starts with l at l at means it's a location tag so now if we do like ex teleport i think player and then location the location tag that we have there location i think should be something along the lines of this, 2 says 7, 3, there you go, 2, flat. Yep. Um, <laughs> so it put us in the ground because I totally forgot I'm supposed to add one to it. But it'll put you pretty much in the median of four blocks. If I stand like right, right on the corner, it's hard to see, but if you look at my XYZ, you can see they're pretty close to whole numbers there. Like that would be 277. Seven. Um, and that would just be negative two. Of course, I can't really perfect it because it's like really hard to get online, but you get the point. <clears throat> so let me change that again. Four. Now, of course, you can add like 0.5, so negative 2.5, and then 277.5, and now we're actually in the dead center. Whenever you're using a command like teleport, always make sure to pay attention to this XYZ number and not the block number, because this will give you a more accurate um, teleportation spot. So like right here is negative 1.5. Right, right here is negative 0 0.5. Right here is 276.5. Right here is 275.5, etc. So that's gonna be how location tags work. There's actually a ton more location tags, such as cuboid tags, uh, ellipse tags, there's there's several more, but that's the basic of a location tag is the, <clears throat> you know what, we're just going to do this. The basic of a location tag is L at and then coordinates and then a world. So the last thing I want to cover are context tags. <clears throat> Contexts are pretty much referring to whatever directly caused an event. These are used for um, these are used for world scripts. And well, let's go ahead and get out of the classroom for this one. Context tags, like I said, are going to be tags that directly um, go back to our um, world events. I don't remember what I have set right now on my world scripts, not gonna lie. Let's see. <clears throat> non player breaks oak planks. We have the script. Okay, so we're. We are just going to. If you have this script open, I am literally just commenting everything out to disable it. And we're gonna go ahead and start new. So here we need to type in a new script. So we're gonna. We're just gonna call this new world script. Type world because world is pretty much what handles any and all events that occur in Minecraft. And we're gonna type events. <clears throat> I think to keep it simple starting off, we're gonna do on player breaks breaks block. Doesn't matter what block, just on player breaks block. Now, context 
or sorry, I guess we need to add narrate context. Okay, so context is going to refer to whatever uh, your event is pointing to. Now, you, we can't do context.player because the way this works is <clears throat> we, the player, are activating the world script. So if we wanted to say player, we would literally still just use player tags, like player.name uh, broke this block. Let's go ahead and square that off, save, ex, reload. And now, moose room status broke this block. So everything inside of a world event is still going to retain, or is still going to use player tags if referring to the player that activated it, which for us, we are player. Now, let's go ahead and duplicate this line. And now we're going to change up what the tag is. Uh, we're going to type context.block has been broken. We're going to save and reload. Um, maybe we need, I think it's actually dot block dot material. EX reload. Hmm. Context dot material, maybe? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, as you can see, as I break it, there's a ton of, um, a ton of spam going on. M at cobblestone has been broken. Now, why why are we seeing m at? Why why is that there? Well, that's good. M at is the full tag for an item. They are material tags. If you want to get rid of the m at, we're gonna add a special ending to our tag, which is gonna be dot formatted. Also, let's add some color here so it's a little bit more distinguishable. We're gonna do and we're gonna do and a. Now we're going to do ANC. Uh, I just want to be able to see the red, so we're going to do EX reload. And now... Context.material.name. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, sorry. So formatted is... it's. Um, I actually don't know how to explain formatted currently, so I'll definitely make sure to explain it in a future tutorial. But um, for material, you're usually just going to use name whenever you're trying to get the name of a material, which sounds straightforward, but, you know. Uh, if you want to avoid the M at grass block or dirt block or cobblestone or oak log, whatever, you need to make sure you add dot name to the end of it. Kind of like how our name is Mushroom status. However, if I had just player, it would actually give me my full Minecraft UUID. And it's like, who the heck is that? That's similar to how materials work. So we just need to keep dot name in there. So if we reload. Now if I start breaking other blocks, cobblestone has been broken, oak log has been broken, torch has been broken, wall torch has been broken. I didn't realize there was a difference there. Glass pane has been broken, etc. You get the point. So those are context tags in a nutshell, let me go ahead and add a, uh, hmm, let me go ahead and throw a zombie in a house here, real quick. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add a new event real quick, on player kills entity, narrate, con, oops context.entity. Context is pretty much always going to point back to whatever it was. So like player.name is player and then block is the context material. Um, we're just getting the name of the block that was broken. So for here we're actually going to get the display and everything of the mob that we're going to kill. So narrate context entity has been killed. Let's go ahead and add some color formatting to this too, so that way we can see it easier in chat. Now if we save and reload. Let me find the uh, zombie one real quick. Zombie horror, zombie villager, zombie. Okay. And let me get a, a good looking axe, or a good name genius. So now, if I kill this zombie. 
Well, it's going to give me my or the entity tag. Now there's a different, a few different things that we can do. I think the best way to figure it out, and this is going to be a little bit more difficult for active troubleshooting. This is more of a like once you got it figured out kind of thing. You know what to do. Let me go and break this real quick. There we go. So we're going to throw him in there just for a moment. That's going to be our little makeshift test, uh, testing chamber. We're going to type in ex narrate player dot target. Okay, so there's the um, entity ID that we got last time we killed him. So now we need to figure out what we're going to add. Are we going to add name? Well, that's going to give us the mob type. So... At least there you could literally replace entity with zombie if you wanted to be specifically on player kills zombies. Um, if it's any, any entity in general, this does include animals, so you can just do entity. Um, let's see, so target, I think type, no, target entity. Entity type. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's a few different ways to get back to it. You could do target, target.name, or target entity type. Now, the big thing between name and entity type is say we actually gave the zombie a name. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. So, what I am going to do is spawn in one of my. Never mind, I don't have anything mobs on the server. So, we're going to do this the old fashioned way. We are going to grab an anvil. We are going to grab a name tag, if I can find it. And we're just gonna do it this way. Name tag. Name name tag. <laughs> okay, we're gonna plop that down. Zom boy. I don't know if I can apply it. Yeah, I can, okay. So now if we do target.name, it's gonna return to us Zomboy because that's what his display name is. The only way name would work in place of entity type is if you did not have a custom display name. But, so now, in this instance, we would have to use entity type and return zombie. So now that we know what tags we can use, we can throw it back in here and do entity um, dot name has been killed by reload, ex reload. And kill him. Zomboy has been killed. And if I change it, then, or actually just to kind of show you an example, uh, context that entity type has been killed. Let me give him that name again. We're gonna ex reload, and we are gonna go ahead and just kill him off. So we got Zomboy, and then, let's see, what was the target we used? I think we used target. Mm. Let's try dot formatted. I think that's how it would actually work here. So we're going to add him again, name tag him again, reload again, and now it should. Uh, okay, so formatted is just not working with me today. That's pretty cool. But you got the gist with the other tags that we typed in chat. Uh, they do require playing around with. I think if you're ever confused on it, as always, you can go back into this website, type in dot name. It should bring you, uh, there's gonna be several. World tag name, plugin name, player name, NPC name, material name, entity name, which actually I think we need to be here, so NV. Dot name. Name, we already found out that that's going to return the, uh, um, the display name of the mob. So we're seeing here it should return the entity type. So context.entity. Maybe it's going to be entity type. Context entity, entity type. I don't know. Let's go ahead and give it a try. If this doesn't work, we will just move on. Yeah, okay, there we go. So, um, Sometimes you need to add extra. You would think that just entity type would work, but if you do, well, actually, I guess there's really no reason it shouldn't work considering we're already pointing out that that's the entity that we want to do. But sometimes you just gotta, um, 
Sometimes you gotta do this, even if it seems kind of redundant. So context, entity, entity type. So if we kill now, Zomboy has been killed, but the zombie entity has also been killed. That's gonna be a very basic demonstration to context tags. Again, they are always gonna point back to whatever our subject is um, inside of a world script. So player.name is gonna to refer to player. Context entity is gonna to refer to the entity that we killed or, you know, the zombie that we killed or, you know, the, the sheep that we killed, whatever the case. Um, it's always gonna point back to this one. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That is a very, very basic rundown of what context tags are and pretty much a basic rundown of what all the other tags are. As you've seen on the website, there are so, 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 so many more, but you know, that's, that's basically, that was a simplified short version of it. So I hope that wasn't too overwhelming for you guys. I definitely recommend going and trying out new things. If you have a general idea of what it is that you're wanting to target, just go to the website, press Control F and or Command F, and then just type in what you think it's going to be. Another quick way to do it, location dot. That will eventually take us down. Yeah, it'll take us to more location-based tags. Um, you know, entity dot. It'll take us to entity tags plus other stuff. Entity tag last damage, uh, last damage duration, last damage cause, amount, leash, falling block, yeah, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Pretty much anything entity. Uh, player dot will also take us to player tags. Basically, if you have a general idea of what you think it's going to involve, just just type that in the chat up here, and eventually you'll find what you are looking for. I do it all the time. And trust me, there's no way I could ever memorize every single tag that is possible within Denizen. So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I'll try to keep it segmented. If you guys haven't already, make sure to subscribe for more good content. I am going to continue to try to push it out because you guys have been an amazing community. And the fact that some of you are telling me that you still want to learn more is pretty inspiring to me. I'm not going to lie. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future. Wait, that was my Mythic Mobs intro. Or exit. Wait, uh. <laughs> Class dismissed.